Out front now, Republican Congressman from Kentucky, Thomas Massey. Congressman, thanks so much for the time. Hey, thanks for having me on again, Kate. Thank you. So, you have been a no vote on this health care bill. That's been no surprise. According to Twitter today, you've <laughs> now changed your vote as of this yes. afternoon from no to hell no. Please That's explain, correct. Congressman. Well, I thought I would double down. There's a lot of uh, speculation as to whether members are changing their votes right now, and I just wanted to let people know that I was steadfastly in the no category. Frankly, I think that's indicative of a lot of my colleagues. I've counted 30 conservatives who are voting no on this, and they really aren't changing their position and haven't changed their position in the last 24 hours. That's very interesting, because you hear a very different message from the White House and from Republican leaders right now. The White House well, saying that the momentum's all in their favor, House Speaker Paul Ryan saying they're adding votes, not losing yeah. votes today, and a spokesman for Mark Meadows, who you know very well, the chair yeah. of the Freedom Caucus, he is striking, uh, the, he's striking a bit of an optimistic tone, a surprising optimistic tone. His spokesman saying that we're hopeful we can get something done and they're working with leaders on it all throughout the night. Do you sense the momentum is shifting in Speaker Ryan's favor? Well, let me tell you how the leadership can be right and I can be right at the same time. I told you we've got 30 hard no's that aren't changing. In fact, there were a lot more than 30 no's on this, and uh, those people just aren't vocal. I've witnessed the leadership on the floor working on members of Congress that aren't on anybody's list as being no. So they probably got problems that they are fixing that everybody doesn't even know about yet. So they may have switched 10 members, but not 10 members on my list, not two members on my list. You still think this bill has no chance, or do you think it's changing tonight and it does have a chance tomorrow night? Well, they're, in, they're meeting in the Rules Committee right now, upstairs, and um, they're not going to make any changes in there that are going to change 30 of the Freedom Caucus or other conservatives like myself from no to yes. Like, the changes just aren't that drastic. And I think we could get to yes, but I think it's going to take <laughs> this bill going down tomorrow. They may pull the bill from the floor um, or they may push it to the floor. If they do, I think it'll fail. You still think, no matter though the White House and the House Speaker think that they've got the momentum, the wind is at their back, you still think yeah. that they are, I don't know, making it up? You don't think they get there? Well, that's, those are the key words, momentum, wind at their backs. They're not telling you they have the votes because they don't have the votes. They're using a lot of euphemisms, and they're sounding really optimistic. But I can tell you they're in trouble. During the meeting um, yesterday when President Trump visited you all, he warned yeah. all of you that voting against this could mean some of you could lose your seats and also that Republicans could lose the majorities. Do you believe him? We're afraid he's a one-term president if this passes. We are trying to save him. The phone calls to my office are running 275 against versus four. Only four votes from my constituents are in favor of this. So this electorally voting for this is bad today, and it's going to be really bad in two or three years when the changes start kicking in and uh, health insurance prices start going through the roof. But, Congressman, you also know politically, this president is a man that is known to take names, and this is a hey. man that is known to have a long memory for those who go against him. Do you fear that he'll campaign against you when you vote no on this? Well, he's been to Kentucky, which, I, you know, I'm from Kentucky. Yeah. He's, he was there this week, and Pence was there the week before. But frankly, in Kentucky, the vote against this bill is still the right vote. Whether um, Democrats are for no or Republicans are for no, there's just no constituency for this bill in Kentucky. So if this bill fails, you yeah. will not blame yourself, of course. You don't, aren't going to place blame on yourself. <laughs> Who are you going to say is to blame? Is it Paul Ryan or is it President Trump? You know, when President Trump took the advice of the Heritage Organization, the Federalist Society, and came up with a good Supreme Court nominee, every, he was a hero. But then when he started taking the advice of Paul Ryan and lobbyists here in Washington, D.C., his, his ratings went down 10 points. And I hope that's what he sees from this, that we're trying to save him from bad advice. And maybe he'll start taking advice from those conservatives again. So then who's to blame if this fails? Who's to blame? Well, you know what? This shouldn't fail. After, after the bill goes down tomorrow, we can go back to the drawing board and they can bring conservatives to the table instead of just trying to break their kneecaps and twist their arms after the bill's written. And then we can all take the credit for a good bill. So when it does fail, then you can come back and tell me who you blame. Congressman, it's great it's, to have you. If it does you fail, go, right. let's Sorry, put it Kate. that way. Thank you so much, Congressman. Yes. Thanks for your time. Thank you.